Welcome back to Excel HQ. Today we are diving into the importance of data validation and every way you can use it to best help you. Data validation is especially great for when you have multiple people working on a single Excel sheet because you'll always want to ensure that the data is accurate, consistent, and error-free. Data validation helps make sure that the data entered is always correct and it can speed up multiple processes in Excel. I'm going to show you how to restrict certain data types, circle incorrect data, have input and error messages when incorrect data is inputted, and what I find the most useful is creating drop-down lists, and then having further drop-down lists dependent upon what you choose in your first list. Now, let's dive right in. All right, now what you see right here is a list of students, and we are going to list off their programs, the specialization within their program, and their expected graduation year. And we're going to do this all with data validation. And we're going to start off with expected graduation year. To find data validation, you'll want to go to the data tab in your home ribbon. And then here you'll find this symbol here. It might be larger for you if you are on a desktop, but I'm on a laptop. So I only have a small image, but it is data validation. You'll want to click on that. And then this will pop up. You'll have settings. You'll have an option for an input message and an option for an error alert. So first with settings, we can allow only certain types of numbers to be allowed in this list. So right now, if I go whole number, because I want a whole number like 2024 for expected graduation year, and then you could choose between, not between, equal to, there's many other restrictions you can put on this. But right now, I know that everybody on this expected graduation year is either a first or a fourth year. So the minimum it could be right now is 2024. And then the maximum it could be is 2027. So then I will press OK, and that will apply the changes to only this cell right here. If I try to put in 2000, I'll get the error message, and I can retry or cancel. It won't allow me to have that in there. However, you can change it so that incorrect data is allowed. So you would go back to your data validation and your error alert. I have it at stop. You can change this to a warning or information. So for the information, you can add a title and an error message. For right now, I could just put something as simple as this is wrong. And I press OK on that. And then I type in the year 2000. It says this is wrong. This value doesn't match the data validation restrictions defined for the cell. I press OK. However, it allows me to enter in the number even though it is incorrect. Most times you don't want to let that happen. So you would just keep your data validation on stop. And you can also have an input message to make sure that the people are always inputting the correct information. So right here I could put, make sure the year is between 2024 and 2027. I press okay on that. Whenever I click on this certain cell right here, this will pop up. Make sure the year is between 2024 and 2027. I type in 2027, it works perfectly. I want to apply data validation to my whole column here. I could just use this right clicker right here just to drag it down. It is now applied to this one. I will take out the 2027 though, and I could drag it as far as I want down. The input message stays. If I type in the wrong number, I'll have, I put the stop option on. So then it will stop me as well. Now that is just an example with whole numbers. You could also do data validation for decimals, dates, times, text length. So if I went to a different cell here, let's say my specialization, and I did data validation, text length, well, I would have it greater than, it has to be greater than four. There we go. And then I type in the word like two. What happens, it doesn't allow it to happen. If I type in the word four, does it allow it to happen? No, because it's greater than four. But then if I go bigger and I'll go to ninth, just for an example word, it then allows that to be entered in the cell. And that is the way you could protect data validation. Now, for lists, lists are probably the most useful thing that data validation can do for you. So here I have my program lists and then my specialization lists. And what I will do for this, is I will take this data validation here, and then in the allow, I'll go to lists. And then it wants to see the list that I'm referencing. So I'll click on that. And then on my 
second sheet here, I have my programs. So we're only going to be going over the three programs and then specializations you could go to farther within your programs. So right now I only want to reference business, engineering, and science. I'll click enter on that. I'll go OK. And then for this drop down list right here, business, engineering, or science, I can drag it all the way down like this to cover every single cell. And that will be good. Now, before I do specialization, I'll want to make sure that I clear the data validation that I put on this cell earlier. So I'll click clear all. OK. And that gets rid of the data validation. Now, you now know how to make a list. So here, business, engineering, science. But I want to make a list for the specialization as well. The way you do this is you go back to your lists and you find your list that you would have for business, the list I would have for engineering and for science. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my whole list. And then in the top left corner here, where it references the first cell that I had, so C3, I will just rename this. I will rename this as business. And then for this one, I will go to the cell again. I will rename this as engineering. And then for my last one, I'm going to rename it as science. Perfect. Now, the list will recognize which one this is under. And what I mean by that is when we go back to our sheet three, if I go to data validation and then type in lists, you can use the special function called indirect. And then you will reference the cell to the left. So I will reference this cell. Close off that bracket. I'll press OK. And then it will give me human resources, finance, accounting, marketing, and so on. So it recognizes that this list right here is now called business. And the word to the left is business. In order to drag this down, however, and have it work for engineering and science, right now I'm stuck on the cell C3. I want to be stuck in the column C, so I'm going to leave that dollar sign there for that. But for the three dollar sign, I'm going to get rid of that. So it goes down and recognizes other things besides business. So now if I drag it down for engineering, I'll have the options to pick environmental, mechanical, electrical, so on. And for science, biology, physics, computer science, biomedical, and this will work for my whole list. So now I can go here and click on, well, Mr. Johnson, he's in engineering. What is he in? He's an aerospace engineer. And what's his expected graduation date? Let's make sure it's between 2024 and 2027. I could have also done a list for this, but he is in his second year. He's going to be graduating two years down the line. He is in 2025. And that is how data validation works. Now, for our expected graduation year, I'm just going to change this one piece of data validation here to have an error alert of just information instead. All right. So then if I type in 2028, which is wrong, it gives me that information. This is wrong. However, it still allows me to do that. And sometimes when you apply data validation to data that's already existing and you want to find the wrong things, you can do this by going to data validation again and then circle invalid data. It will circle this data for you. Anything in this list that is invalid, it'll circle it for you. The only thing invalid right now is 2028. I can't enter in anything else because all the other error messages are stopped. But that's how you circle data that shouldn't actually be there. If I need to clear that, I'll just go to clear validation circles in my data validation tab as well. And there we go. That is how you create restrictions with data validation. You create input and error messages and you create lists dependent upon other lists. If you enjoyed this video or have any other questions, make sure to leave a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe and check out some of my other videos where I go over other things of all about Excel. But now I'll see you in the next video.